Bless your name, oh my God. Heavenly Father, as we go into your words, we ask you to open our hearts and our minds. Yes. The revelation knowledge of your words flow into us. Because you said your words are spirit and your, and your words are life. And as I was reading the other day about you being the vine, Jesus, and we being the branches. And you mm. say we cannot abide in you and, ex uh, and accept we. You abide in us and we abide in you. And we abide in you by getting into your words. So yes. we ask you to open your our understanding as we read and listen to your words. Yes. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I'm reading John 14. I'm starting from the first verse. He said, let not your heart be troubled. You believe in God, you believe also in me. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you. I go to prepare a place for you. And if I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and receive you unto myself. That Jesus. where I am, there you may be also. And where I go, you know not the way. And then Thomas said unto him, Lord, we know not whether thou goest, and how can we how can we know the way? Jesus said unto him, I am the way, the truth, mm. and the life. No, no man cometh unto the Father but by me. If you have known me, you should have known my Father also. And from henceforth you know him and have seen him. Philip said unto him, Lord, show us the Father, and it suffices us. Jesus mm. said unto him, have I been so long time with you, yet you have not known me, Philip? He that mm. has seen me have seen the Father. And how sayest thou, show us the Father? Believest thou not that I am in the Father, and the Father in me? The words that I speak unto you, I speak not of myself, but the Father that dwell in me. He does the work. Believe me that I am in the Father, and the Father in me, or else believe me for the very work's sake. Yes. Verily, verily, I say unto you, he that believe it and me, the works that I do shall he do also, and greater works than these shall he do, because I go unto my Father. And whatsoever you shall ask in my name, that will I do, that the Father may be glorified in the Son. If you shall ask anything in my name, I will do it. If you love me, keep my commandments. Mm. And pray the Father. And he shall give you another comforter, that he may abide with you forever. Even the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive, because it seeth him not. Neither knoweth him, but you know him, for he dwell with you, and shall be in you. I will not leave you comfortless. I will come to you, yet a little while on the world. The world seeth me no more, but mm. you see me because I live, you shall live also. At that day you shall know that I am in the Father, and my Father in you, and you in me. So Heavenly Father God, we just thank you for your words. And we know, thank Lord you. Jesus, that you are in us, and we are in you, and you are yes, in yes. us. And we thank you, Lord God, for your words, that we can continue to read your words and continue mm. to abide in you. We bless your name, O oh God. We thank you for our children, our grandchildren. We yeah, thank you for yeah. our leaders and our teachers. We thank you for the doctors. We thank you for the president. We thank you for this new election that's going about. We thank you for mm. the mercies. We thank you for grace. We thank, thank you, God. Jesus, for your shed blood on Calvary. We thank you that without you, Lord Jesus, we can do nothing. Because you have said it more than one in your words. You have said it in, in um, verse seven and you've also say said it in in john 15 also without you we can do nothing nothing so we come to you lord jesus and we give ourselves to you so that you can work through us mm. let us grow as we listen to your words we love you lord jesus and we come now and to listen to your words amen 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 thank you lord uh, and like I was saying, welcome, Sister Beverly. Welcome, Sister Sandra. We're just so grateful to God to um, for answering, hearing our prayer and answering our prayer. Here we have Sister Vesper, who's been down and hospitalized, and today she's up and with us and in our midst. Amen. And for that, we give God glory. We give God Amen. honor. So we're going to raise a praise um, as we lift Amen. up a thanksgiving for um, Sister Vesper being well. 
Let's remember those that are sick among us. Let's remember yes, our travelers. Sister yes, yes. Val Webb is, is yes. traveled. Um, Sister Monica yes. is traveling tomorrow, she said in her message to us. Um, Sister Alice is in Texas or something, she said to me. Um, I don't know how many have heard on the news about um, Pastor Gerald Oldstein's church. Mm -hmm. So there's a couple of things we, we, we can lift up tonight. Um, so I'm gonna um, pick on Sister um, Sandra. Her, she's unmuted, so let's go there. Sister Sandra, if you would, pray for our travelers. And I mentioned the three names, Sister Alice, mm -hmm. uh, Texas, Sister Val in um, Jamaica, and Sister Monica, who's going to Jamaica tomorrow, and anybody else traveling. Thank you. Sister Monica is going to Trinidad. Trinidad, yes, sorry, tomorrow, yes. Mighty God, because we know you are all knowing. You mm. are omnipotent, omnipotent, yes. and you are the God that is all over, all around. Mm. Mighty God, we know that our, our sisters, they are in good hand, and we thank you, God, because you will favor them um, in every aspect of their journey you will be by their side we have we have the best pilot the best mm. operator the best hallelujah operator, the best everything so we don't have to worry our fret about anything because you are in mm. control you are mighty you are all knowing you are powerful mm. and we bless your name tonight because mm. you promise us never to leave us and never to forsake us you said we should not worry about anything but in everything mm. we should be giving thanks to you lord yeah. because yes. you are our faithful god faithful yes, faithful you god you are and we bless your name tonight for all your goodness and your mercies god for mm. traveling mercies mm. on our sisters and we also pray for those that we don't even know that are traveling. Everyone yes. that's traveling, mighty God. We pray yes. that you will be with them. I pray you for Bina um, as she's traveling um, to St. Martin tonight. God, I flip her up for you Jesus. as she goes to St. Martin to celebrate her 31st birthday. Father, we pray that you will go before her and her yes. friends. Yes. You will yes. protect them. You will um, prepare the place that they will stay, mighty God. You will saturate yes. that, that the dwelling arm um, under you with your blood. Your angels mm. will go and stand mm -hmm. guard in every aspect of the trip that they will go, mighty God. You be um, with them, in them, above them, mm. below them, beneath them, in yes. everything that they yes. will do, mighty God. You be with them, God. And I just thank you for the good report. I bless your name tonight because you are a marvelous God. And in, yes, in spite of the weather that they're predicting, God, we know that you are the only one who predicts mm. what's 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 going to happen. So, Lord, we put everything in your hands. We pray yes. for journey mercy for those that will be in the sky, those that are on the road, yes. and those that will be on the bus, the trains, wherever they will be, God. You be with them, them right now in the mighty name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Amen. 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 Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Man, we bless your name this tonight. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Sister Beverly, are you there? <laughs> yes, Sister I'm Beverly, here. I'm here. If you would lift up the body of Christ, and I'm saying that in reference to what has transpired um Sunday service there in um Texas. I visited um Joel Olstein Church myself. Um, the shooting that happened there today, if you lift up those that are traumatized by this incident and those that were hurt, pray for healing and wisdom. Jesus. Amen. Father God, we give you thanks for this day. Thank you, Lord God, for, yes, God. for life, for us being here tonight, God. We thank you, Lord. You said with two or three are gathered in your name, you are in the midst. Yes, and you yes. are with us, Lord God. You love us with an everlasting love, God. And we thank you. Lord, we lift up Joel Olstein, God, and his church tonight, Father. We Jesus. pray, we thank you, Lord God, that Lord, that nobody was killed, God. We pray for those who were hurt. Mm. in that shooting shooting their god jesus father god we pray lord for your 
peace, God. Lord, you have peace, not, Lord. that they will not be fearful, God. You have not given us the spirit, spirit. of fear. Mm -hmm. Mm. But you have given us the spirit of power and of love and of, of a sound mind. Jesus. Help us, God. Help them, Lord God, to, to trust in you, God, to look to you, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Father God, we pray for your protection, Lord, upon that area, dear God. We pray for your protection upon the children, mm. oh God, upon, yes. upon the body of Christ, Father God. Mm. We pray, mm. Lord, against the the attacks, oh God, of the of the wick, of wicked men, oh God, of the enemy. Father God, we yeah. pray that you would cover, Lord, the congregations, oh God, with the blood of Jesus, Lord God, that no, no weapon, oh God, formed against us shall prosper. Father God, yes. we thank you, Lord God. We give you praise tonight, Lord, that you will give them strength today, God, that you yes. will strengthen them, oh God, that you will keep them, Lord God, as they hope in you, as they look to you tonight. Mm. Father God, we thank you, Lord God, for your you. for your blessings, oh God, upon us, Lord. Keep them, oh God. I pray for your strength in in, in Oldstein tonight, dear yes, God. Dear. Help him, Lord, to be encouraged, oh God. Help him, dear God, mm. to be to be strengthened in you, Father God. Yes, Hallelujah. Knowing God that He may feel responsible, God, for for the congregation, Father God. I pray, mm. Lord, that you would touch their lives tonight yes, in the name yes. of Jesus. Fill them with your peace. In Jesus' yes, name, amen. amen. Father, I pause to say thank you. Thank you, God, for your goodness. Thank you, God, for your mercy. Thank you, God, for your grace. Thank you, God, for your favor upon our lives. You know, we take laying down and getting up the next morning for granted, like we're in control of everything. But Father, you are in full control of everything that concerns our life. Father, thank you for the opportunity this past week to um, spend time at the UMass Medical School among doctors as I, act of you know as the voice to the medical to the vitiligo community among these doctors god i thank you for opening that door you know god i give you praise for that and i thank you that you know even having to rush out at, at the end they wanted me to speak on on um, friday more midday and i had to rush out because i remembered roy had a doctor's appointment and had to get back to get him into that mri machine and god as we wait for the responses about his heart um over the next few days god we have laid it before you before we went out the door we've been petitioning your throne for mercy and so god we we wait before you for the result and we know even now that is a good result. Whatever it is, it is good. It is well because it's committed into your hand, the capable hand of our healer. And so, God, we thank you. Thank you that even through this situation, you know, I'm seeing my husband differently. I'm seeing him in a different light. And the way that he calls on you has changed. And I thank you because. Whatever you do, you do it well. Sometimes we don't see the end from the beginning, but God, you're all in the midst of it. You're all up in it. And so we give you praise. We give you thanks. We give you honor. As I lift up even um, Sister Bev, uh, as we talked about those that have traveled and death and so forth. Um, Sister Bev's um, sister's husband and the family over there in Trinidad and you know, God, even as they prepare this um, for the funeral and what have you, Father, give them um, your peace in this situation. Comfort uh, a mother, a wife that buries her husband, uh, children that, that, that see their father laid to rest. God, bring comfort. Let them see in the midst of all of this your peace. Let them experience your peace. Let them experience your comfort in this situation. And I think, as Sister Beverly said, it's two sides of the family. One funeral is Thursday and one funeral is Friday. God, we pray for comfort for this complete family, God. We, we, we pray that in this situation that lives will come to know you and to realize that you're still God, you're still in full control. God, have your way. 
have your way. I know distance between being there to be a comfort to your loved ones can be even hard and taxing on us. You know, when we can't go, we can't travel or whatever the case may be. So, Father, we pray for peace and strength and comfort for everyone going through even right now. And, Father, I lift up our children. And I use Sister Anne sitting with us tonight as a point of contact. I remember when Sister Vesper was sick last week and she said, Sister Val, Anne was there run to get me a cup of tea. Father, I thank you for our children. And God, I pray a blessing on Sister Anne's life. Strengthen her, comfort her, let her know that mom is there. But even better than that, that you're right there and she does not have to be worried. Mom is under your care. God, we pray for all of our children and encounters that they'll face in their lives, in their homes, in their relationships. God, be there for them. The Webb's children, Joel across the seas, and those here. God, all of our children. I think of um, Sandra talked about Bina and her travels and the other daughter with her sons. God bless all of our children. God that loves children. God, we pray a blessing on grandchildren. I don't have none yet, but they, God, I call them into being, and I thank you for them even now. God, continue to lay your hands on each and every one of us as we gather on this call every Monday. Put aside whatever we you know, want to do or have to do because this means so much to us. God, we know that there's a blessing tied to what we're doing. God, we know without a shadow of a doubt that there's a blessing associated with this meeting. And so, God, we thank you in advance. We give you praise in advance for what is stirring on the inside, what is growing within us. And, God, we give you praise for what you're going to continue to do in our lives. We pronounce a blessing over Brother Joel, a man who is busy as he does this education piece of his life. But, God, in the midst of that, You've carved out time that he can delve into your word and stir up and come to us and present to us in, in bite sizes and in, in a way that's so easily understandable. God, we thank you for this young man. We knew his youth. We knew his strength. We knew everything that's about him. God, we just thank you for him. We love him. and We know that you love him even more. Thank you for the ability to travel and go and go and all these different places, there's a blessing associated to that. And we thank you for that. God, we give you praise for those that are yet to come on this call. Please hasten their footsteps, God. We don't want anyone to miss the meal. But we thank you now. Come have your way with us, we pray, in the name of Jesus. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. And amen. amen. Welcome, Dr. Love. So good to see you. I'm going to turn it into the hands of Brother Joel. I don't know. Dr. Love, you have any testimony, anything that you want to share before we transition? We have a couple more minutes. Yeah. I have Go ahead. Yeah, I, yeah. My test. I have a, a lot of testimony, but I'll just share this and that the Lord, uh, that this, that testimony, I would just say from this prayer group, uh, God has really, the lesson that I learned about two weeks ago, last week and the previous week, like there's a real, uh, sometimes you have like a very issue that you didn't know how to address, but from the word said, I guess word of God, I was able to apply it. And mm. it should have been lingering on for over 15 years. Uh, God is able through my obedience to the instruction of the word, able to resolve, resolve it. And it's so huge that it's kind of lifting a heavy weight off Amen. my shoulder. So that's, you know, just nothing God, God word is the solution. Mm -hmm. Is the mm. answer, whatever you look, sometimes what you're looking for in all this year, you have it mm -hmm. within your hand. That's right. But when we say, 
they got was from your from the book and in your hand and your heart and speak it is real yeah that's that, that amen. my testimony and that's amen amen, amen. amen. And that's what Brother Joe has been saying, to reminding us that we already had it. We just don't know how to. We just aren't even we aware. We have. God has given all things to us. It's good for us. Yes. Yeah. Uh, and uh, also, with the, as we're talking about Holy Spirit, sometimes we talk about ideas. That's our benefit. It's that, that idea you're talking about is the Holy Spirit. God speak, God mm. talking to you. So that's an uh, area also mm -hmm. that benefited me. It's true listening, not listening to my flesh, my two senses. Like, mm. brother, I never knew it was. This is really, I'm, I'm please, I'm just, I'm not trying to uh, big man, big anybody up. Like, this, anytime. I just take away my six senses. I never knew it that way until it was broken down. Mm. So now I allow the Holy Spirit. So when I have those dreams, so that I, I've been able to, I, I don't even know what to say. You know, mm. like as God is using us, I don't, why would one person, I just, is God doing it? You can open up. That's a hospital in, yeah. in a state. A hospital mm. me, for me working for the state with the on the money. That's, I think I ended that way. To God be the glory. Amen. The glory. glory. Amen. 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 Welcome, uh, Sister Judith. Welcome, welcome, welcome. And so we want to um, turn it into the hands of Brother Joel. Take it from here, Brother Joel. God bless you. Thank you. Good night, my dear sisters and brothers, in the wonderful name of Jesus. We thank the Holy Spirit for being such a great part of our lives. Because we've been Jesus' ministry. And in order for that to happen, our bodies, our bodies have become of the Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful? We, we really need to grasp the significance of our bodies becoming the temple where the Holy Spirit dwells. And he's there for a specific purpose, for us to continue Jesus' ministry. You know, as I was listening to the scripture that Sister, Sister um, Vesper was reading tonight, we see how much we are intertwined with God and Jesus. And I, I glean from that, that those people, those who would see us with their natural eyes would actually see Jesus and the Father and the Holy Spirit. And they should see that. I mean, Jesus was saying, have you been with me so long and you don't know the Father? And he's saying you should know the Father because the Father lives in me. And whatever I say is what the Father says. And what I do is what the Father does. So everything about me is about the Father. Now, we have that same privilege and opportunity to be like Jesus. As a matter of fact, we are actually the body of Jesus here in the earth. That's who we are. We're the body of Christ. You know, the, the, the unfortunate thing is that we try to take Christianity. We try to take Christianity and make it a religion. Christianity is not a religion. Christianity is power. <laughs> that is what it is. It's power. Because as Christians, we have the power of the Holy Spirit living in us. We have the kingdom of God living in us. So wherever we go, the authority of the kingdom is in control of the space which we occupy. But we have to know that. 
We have to know that. That yeah. knowledge is so important. You know, I was looking at um at at Second Peter, Second Peter one verse three, right? And and I'm going to read it from the from the New Living Translation, and it says, <clears throat> "By His divine power." Now, nobody has power except God. So whatever power you see people exercising, that power is power that has been given to them. It is not their power. That power has been given to them. They didn't generate that power. Okay? By his divine power, God has given us everything. Let me say that again. By his divine power, he has given us everything we need for living a godly life we have received stop praying for these things we have received the moment we're praying for these things unless our prayer is a prayer of thanksgiving we're actually praying in doubt right we're doubting we have received all of this. Listen to how we have received it. By coming to know him. So it is either we're praying in doubt or we don't have the knowledge. Because it's a saying here, we have received all of this by coming to know him. The one who has called us to himself. He called us to himself. We didn't, we didn't look for him. You know, you know, you 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 want your children, your children, or you want your husband or your wife, or you want to get in touch with somebody and you pick up the phone and call them. Okay, well, here we, we have a great illustration of the fact that he called us. The one who called us to himself by means of his marvelous glory and excellence. Now, for the last few weeks, we have been focusing on our spirit man, our spirit man. And, and as I was thinking about that this evening, I, 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 I want us to look at a, at, a, at a scenario where, or a supposition, let us suppose, let us suppose that <clears throat> we didn't have names. Let us suppose we didn't have names. I mean, I, I look out on the screen here and I am identifying everybody by their names. Right? So I know if I'm if I wanted to. Out and call your name right but let us say we didn't have names let us say we didn't have names right do you understand the mess that would be we, did, we don't have names all right so we don't have names and there are no street names there are no street names because your GPS would not work. And, and I mean, I, I'm here in Barbados and I depend on the GPS 100% to get around. I'm driving. All I need is the address. I plug in the address and I'm gone. Now, another very interesting thing here in Barbados that we don't utilize there. And I only realized that since I came to Barbados is that they can send you wherever somebody is the at the identical location that they are at, they, they're at and i only learned that to do that since i came here you can go onto your phone and pin your address and whatsapp it to me when i get that address i click on it and it connects to my gps and takes me to the exact place where you're standing so they don't have to have they don't have to actually have a street name and a number <laughs> and the gps takes me 
the GPS takes me to that exact place that is pinned on my phone. Okay? So, so let us say that we didn't have names. So, uh, so we don't have street names. We don't have street numbers. Right? But that does even make it a little worse now. And we don't have any memory. We don't have names. There, nothing has names on them. In people don't have names. Streets don't have names. Nothing has names. And we don't have memory. So if I, I would not remember, I wouldn't remember where my bedroom is. I wouldn't remember where my house is. I wouldn't remember nothing because I have no memory. Nothing have, have names and I have no memory. Now, that is really, <laughs> that is really an absolute calamity. Let's, let's talk about, let's talk about somebody living in a situation like this where nothing is named, right? So I can't identify you by name. I'm looking at everybody. It is okay when I can see you and I can hear you, but you, I, you don't have no name. And then from the minute I stop looking at you, I forget what you look like because I don't have any memory. What kind of a calamity is that, Sister Love? <laughs> Let, let's talk about that because we're going someplace with this. That's it. That's it. Have work. <laughs> <laughs> I think I think that's the best word to describe. That's a havoc. <laughs> I mean, to living like that is going to be a mess. Total havoc. All right. I want us to understand. I want us to understand that 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 was our exact spiritual condition. That was our exact spiritual condition. And that is why Paul writing to us in, in, in our Hebrews chapter, Romans chapter 12, is telling us that it is critical, it is critical that we educate our minds to what we have in our spirit. So here is another scenario. Here's another scenario, and this could be this. This actually is 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 a real condition that do exist, right? Where an individual is blind, an individual is blind, physically blind, so he can't see anything but darkness. That same individual who is blind cannot hear. That same individual who cannot hear, cannot feel. That individual has no sense of taste or smell. But that individual is alive. But none of the senses function to connect them to the world in which they live, to connect their brain. The other condition was connecting your spirit to your mind or your mind to your spirit. Here it's a situation where your five senses do not exist so that you so nothing is connected. Nothing is connected to your brain. Your intellect is intact, you know. There's nothing wrong with that. It's just that your senses are not functioning. So you're as good as dead. No. Right? No. You just don't have any connect. No, you are alive, you're breathing. You, you're only dead. But you're, in a you're, sense, you're not that, dead because your senses don't. That's the you made a, you're, that you're getting out. You're getting to where we're going, but you're but not dead like because a, your senses don't work. 
But it's, you're it's not, that, you're not, you don't die because you're blind. That's true. But uh, if all of your senses are not functioning, it's like you're hooked up to a, 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 a life machine. You're dead. No, 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 no. It's just, you, no. You, if you take what, if you shut down one sense at a time, mm -hmm. you would realize that you're still alive. Yeah. Yeah. You see, you breathe it. <laughs> You talk to it. that talk to that sister love because that's that's your field <laughs> if somebody have like a, a neuro you know uh is the brain that the brain something is wrong sometimes people could have some condition in the brain that you know the, the, the stimuli or whatever it doesn't cut it because the the brain is the powerhouse everything the heart is still there but your uh the other sensory we have like 30 uh 30 is uh 33 systems so some other system are working but the brain is the powerhouse that connect and, and say, synapse and send signal if anything malfunction this is that condition you're talking about the the eye it might not see but the, the neuro stimulation is not you know working properly but you still are alive but you're, you're not still alive but none of your senses are functioning the functioning <laughs> yeah. yeah yeah okay sister Val. okay so you have so you have that condition i mean they refer to that person as an imbecile as or an invalid in, in invalid invalid but that person that person is alive but there is no connection between the senses and the brain because you're blind you are deaf you can't hear you can't feel you have no you have no sense of taste well, you could eat <laughs> you have no sense of smell so your senses just don't work so in the natural we have that situation and as it is in the natural the very same condition exists for the spiritual now the the, the condition that we just spoke about in the natural where none of the senses work it speaks it speaks very clearly to uh, to to what our spiritual condition sorry what our spiritual condition was before we met christ and even after we have met christ if our spirit man if our spirit man is not activated right if, if our minds are not activated to have connection to our spirit man, then we have a problem because our mind is going to be controlled by our senses. Okay? So our focus is on this, this spirit man. And we have been, we have been learning that this, our spirit man is the man that was created in god's image and likeness it is that spirit man and not the physical man with its five senses it is so important that we get this because if we get this we would stop living from the outside depending on our senses it's like we said this evening you know you would run into somebody and 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 you would and you would ask them oh how are you feeling today how are you feeling today which is which is a normal natural question to ask right how are you feeling today and and you would express how you feel right and and if we look at feeling sometimes you could feel happy sometimes you can feel sad and your feelings fluctuate based on what? What, why, what? Our feelings fluctuate based on what? Because our feelings fluctuate. Based on our emotions. Pardon me? And our emotions? It fluctuates well, on our emotions. What, what okay? Well, what what causes your emotions to function? Our senses. senses. Stimuli. 
Yeah. Uh, well, let's let's keep yeah. it simple. I I don't want to you. I want it. What causes a little child to jump up and down when their mother and father walk inside the room? The feelings. How it's they feel. That's emotion. That's emotion. Mm -hmm. The emotion plays up, but it, hap it that emotion comes into play because something has happened. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Because our of feelings, our feet. Somebody was saying something. Go ahead, Sister Love. No, no, no. Yeah, Sister yeah. Beverly was saying. Somebody said feelings because and emotion. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Go ahead, Sister Bev. Because of what they she sees coming in the room, her parents right something happens right she saw parents she was happy to see them and she expressed real joy all right so now you have another condition where you where, where that same child who expressed real joy did something bad or something wrong and the parent would discipline that child is that child going to be jumping up no and happy and excited no no, no. it's yes, going to be sad so 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 that child is going to express a completely different emotion to to, to tie into the emotion sister valerie we have we have we have three sister valeries okay sister valerie jane so 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 our emotion yes has to do with what we feel now what we feel sometimes is not necessarily not necessarily not not necessarily um a physical blow you don't have to get a physical blow to feel something i mean you could feel good about somebody or you could feel badly about somebody you understand what i'm saying yep, and then yep. all of that ties into your 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 emotion but connected to your emotion is your mind and your will because all of those make up your soul but if you're living based on your five senses, right? Your 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 emotions, your will, and your mind, you are going to be living a very limited life. Because your until your spirit man right until until your 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 emotion your will and your mind are connected to your spirit man and your spirit man is the driver for your life it makes life very very difficult because you know in that spirit man is where your faith is is where your where your love is is where your wisdom is, is where your knowledge and understanding about the things of the spirit live. So if, so if those are not connected to your mind, you are just like the person, right? Who, who is alive, who is alive, but they can't see, they can't hear, they can't smell, they can't taste, and they can't touch. So, so, the, so what is the point? The point I'm trying to make is that we are not physical beings. And we cannot be physical beings because we were made in the image and likeness of God. And God is a spirit. God is a spirit. And God communicates with us, Sister Valerie, through our spirit man. The three parts of us. You see, you have God the Father, the Son, and the Holy Ghost. The three parts of us: the spirit, soul, and body. Now, the spirit man, the spirit man is redeemed. When you when you become born again, and we're gonna go to the word, go to the word in a little while to substantiate what I'm saying. When we become born again. born again sister beverly explain born again for us so 
we are born of the spirit of god we are because of we have come to christ and receive him as lord in our lives he has given right. us a new spirit amen so yeah right so it so to be born again mean that you were born before and you died we were born in adam and the scriptures say we all died in adam we all died in adam that is why we were all born in sin separated from god we died in adam and now we are alive in home because based on what sister beverly just said we've accepted christ as our lord and savior so now we are alive in, in christ, christ. Yes. yes okay but we are alive in christ born again with a brand new spirit but nothing has changed in our mind our will and our emotions and nothing has changed in our bodies now romans 12 is telling us that we have to change we have to get that change to take place here it is a little child is born into this world that child cannot speak right as a matter of fact i understand that it's a few days before they're able to see but that child can't speak that child cannot take care of itself so that child is going to have to go through a process of development the same way it happens in the natural is the same way it happens in the spirit in the phys in the spiritual so a child is born into this world like us who are born into the kingdom of god we become children of god there is a process that we have to go through so we're born again spiritually right but we have to be fed with milk just like how a baby has to be fed with milk and that baby has to grow and mature physically like how we have to grow and mature spiritually to the extent that we grow physically is based on us on our well we started we start with our mommy's milk right hello talk to me somebody and then what happens to that baby let's talk about the process that physical baby goes through before it's able to run around and 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 uh and eat meat and, and grow it, up uh, first of so all, that it, baby does that baby doesn't have any teeth no that's the formula that with milk okay from, from milk it goes to say be say my uh semi feet like when you add or you know uh cereal and all that so, you know then from there solid food and all you know just no, like no 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 you got you got no you got a teeth let's let's not need let's get all the steps okay oh, oh okay so I, 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 that would take you don't, you, okay. don't, you don't remember your children sister love no i do but the, I, I didn't want to that would take okay yeah i know it put up for a start with the milk it's not right. really made because they don't have any teeth you and know right. and it is that nourishment that is going to cause their teeth yeah to, to yeah to, yeah the dentition would then start yeah the nourishment that you develop right. teeth. Right. Uh, the uh, nourishment uh, from that mommy's uh, milk yeah will bring uh, the dentition because for, for the for the gum right and uh, then and and then they're five years old and still having mommy's milk no, then they, they will start, you know, they chewing, they start like to chew because now they they must they, they they call it mastication uh, aspect of it, you know, like chewing, you know, where everything has developed, they now they can chew. Right. That is where the the dental they could chew with their their the teeth and eat solid food and and meat. You wean them off the milk and then you give them a chicken leg. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and 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 in the meantime, what are they doing? They're still they're still in the crib. Oh no! Oh, oh, that, oh that, okay. <laughs> they, they, they learn to walk because, like a bit, you know, they learn to like with the milk. 
with the milk, uh, some people say with the milk, that's only for their feeding. But uh, the other physical aspect to you, you have to, they will learn to, but the four they learn to, they'll be in bed, then they will, they will learn to crawl. From crawling, they will learn to walk. Um, That's what I'm talking about. <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. Yes. And from walking, they, 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 they learn to they run. And um, they also doing that again, they, they start talking too. Yeah. They right. They started to develop. Exactly. They can talk to you, but when they're born, they, that's a normal they, 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 that that crying is a, you know uh and it takes it, them how long it takes them how long to talk hmm. we said maybe, maybe uh like the, uh four boys they just say mama dada you know so they do that yeah yeah no, but to be able to talk properly and communicate how long would that take them uh, i would to just talk. say a, a, a 18 months it depends some three years eight around 18 Plus. months <laughs> three years a three years oh to talk like normal no, i don't know it's gonna take a few years yeah with the kids these days because of the way they wired they, they i'm telling you they, they talk 18 18 months because yeah okay and then after that now after all of that now they get to a stage where we send them to school i went and at that stage they cannot read they cannot write they can't do anything at all and they go through this process of learning and development yeah. and then that person become a person like all of us on this line yeah so that physical process takes place and that spiritual process is the same way right but 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 let's go to the spiritual side of things now what 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 after we're born again what what is our diet uh, the the diet is the word of god the word of god uh uh it's our diet for to help us to mature spiritually because if you don't take that word of god you, you become as a baby you remain a baby because you, then you're you're still operating with your your kind of nature. What I mean by that, you throw times like give, give me this, you quit crying, eh, eh, eh. they give you milk. You know, so but you have to mature, learn to take a solid what I mean by solid food. Right. You so learn. but you have you're gonna be taking the word with with the little matured understanding that you have and it is that word that you feed on as a matter of fact the word begins the word begins as as, as paul points out as milk yes right and then as you as you grow and mature on the word you're able to 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 eat the the meat of the word so you start with the so the process is very similar except that on the spiritual side it is all word ah uh, 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 we okay i don't know all that word is sometimes is the word but some i don't know what it mean like the same way you even with that word so of the word can be really like when you fall you get up it, it might not be pleasant too, like no, 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 let's, let's not, let's not, no, no, okay. let's not, we're not going there. We, we, okay. We, okay. Let's, let's, let's take the steps. We, we're not, we can't reach there yet. Okay. Uh, all right. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, we can't reach there yet. We're going to, we're going to go step by step because it is a process of maturity, right? You, 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 we, we are in, um, we're in children's church where they begin to teach us about Jesus right oh, okay and then oh. we start to sing jesus love the little children all the little children in the world and then we start we, we're not even reading yet then we start reading the bible for ourselves and getting an understanding we we get an opportunity to receive jesus christ as lord and savior we have a relationship with jesus right and and, and we start we start developing now in the natural if you have a 15 year old child right and it is still on milk what would you say about that child still drinking milk don't have no teeth can't eat meat it's a, it's a, it's a, 
It's an uh, rare condition. It, the president has under the whatever has it. What you call it? It's an imbecile. Well, not That's an imbecile. Sister Beverly, go ahead. I see your hand raised. <laughs> As uh, in the natural, I'm thinking in the natural, we you know we communicate. We we depend on our parents. We depend on on mom to help us to you know do do things for us and in the in the spirit we need to depend on god and trust in him uh, well, to, we depend you know, on our father we depend on our brothers and our sisters because sometimes they're the ones who kind of help us help us along yes but that is that that is correct but but it is all of, of our dependency on god So you understand if you look at if you look at how it works in the natural, we would get a very good idea for how it is working in the spiritual. The interesting thing is that what we're talking about in the natural, right? And what we're talking about in the mind and the will and the emotion and the spirit. We're talking about three parts of man that's actually connected to one another. We have, a, we have a spirit and we have a soul and they live in this body. So there's a connection. And anytime you separate, whenever you separate the spirit from the body, what happens? What happens when our when 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 people's spirits are separated from their bodies? They're dead. They're dead. They're dead. They are dead. All right. Dead. Okay. All right. So so when your spirit leaves your body, you're dead. All right. So what happens when your soul, when your soul and your body is separated from your spirit? That's not a trick question. That's a real question. You're a kind of, you know, you're a kind of person. You're separated from God, you know, like, you know, you, you don't have direction. I mean, you don't have like. You're spiritually dead. Yes. Yeah. You know? And that is, that is where we all started to come into. That's why we needed yes. a new birth. We needed to be reborn. We need our, our spirits needed to be recreated. Now, come with me to First Corinthians, First Corinthians. chapter two. And I'm I'm uh, I'm in the New King James Version. First Corinthians chapter two. And I'm at verse, I'm looking at verse six. And thank God, all of us here on this line are born again. All of us on this line need to grow spiritually. We need to mature spiritually so that we can function from our spirits and not from our senses. However, we speak wisdom among those who are mature. Okay, so we're talking now about Christians who are matured. All right, so hold on to that. Yet not the wisdom, so we're qualifying the wisdom here. Yet not the wisdom of this age. Now, when Paul is talking about the wisdom of this age, he's actually talking about the wisdom of this world. Yet not the wisdom of this world world or not of the rulers of this world where you see age days talking about this world this present world right who are coming to nothing so we so so we have to understand here that he's saying that sense knowledge wisdom comes to nothing so that's not the wisdom he's talking about and verse 7 tells us what we speak 
the wisdom of God in a mystery. And this wisdom of God in a mystery is the hidden, hidden wisdom which God ordained before the ages for our glory. So what is he saying is that the natural man, the natural man who is not born again, who is not recreated, does not have the wisdom that we have. But because Jesus Christ was made unto us wisdom. So we have more wisdom than the world. But do we know that? Look at verse 8. Verse 8 says, so before the ages, and this wisdom is for our glory, for us, which none of the rulers of this age knew. The, nobody in this world has, has the wisdom that the children of God has. I don't understand how we could have this kind of wisdom, Sister Valerie Molyneux, and yet sometimes I behave like such a fool. Because the opposite of wise is fool, right? Which none of the rulers of this age knew. Listen to what happened here. For had they known, had they had, had they have the wisdom, you know what they would not have done? They would not have crucified the Lord of glory. If these guys were not fools, they would not have crucified the God. They would not have crucified Jesus. Now, the question here is, clearly, they did not know who Jesus was, right? And it is very clear from what we're reading that the wisdom that these guys who crucified Jesus functioned with is wisdom that came from, up, from below. Not the wisdom from above, but the wisdom from below. And this is where the adversary got trapped because the adversary does not have the wisdom that we have, Sister, Sister Vesper. All right? But as it is written, verse 9, I has not seen, nor ear heard, nor have entered in the, into the heart of man. Listen to this. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Our eyes will never, our, our eyes and our ears are limited. And, and, and because of our eyes and our ears are limited, it could never bring the knowledge and the wisdom to our heart. The things that God has prepared for those who love him. Do we have any idea the things that God has prepared for us? But before I go though, to us who love him, but let us come back to find out how did we love God? Because he first loved us. Thank you very much. The only reason why we're able to love God is because God first loved us. And we, we, where, do we, where would we find that? Right in John 3.16. For God so loved the world, the world of sin and degradation, and he gave his son as a ransom, as a ransom for our sins. So, so when we talk about Jesus paying the price, right, for our sins, we need to understand what that means. It Question. meant, pardon me? Question. Yep, go ahead. I've had this conversation before, and not recent, in recent days, but I've had this conversation before with somebody on this verse, because the, the, the last um, piece where it says the things that God has prepared for us, many people seem to think it's it off in the future. It's, it's the heaven. It's what he's preparing for us. No, this to be, explain this to me so I could he, hear this and, and verify this again in my head. It's, it's what he has prepared for us, period, right now. Right now. The moment that you accept, accept Jesus him. and become Somebody a child me. of God, 
you have available to you Amen. everything that God has prepared for his children. Amen. You are a child of God now. You have started to live your eternal life now. So in this life, we can experience eyes have not seen, ears have not heard. No, exactly. Has right now, right here, right now. Thank you. Okay, so we were talking. We so we, we so we understand that that God that God loves us, right? We understand that, and and we understand that He loved us. And what we were talking about before Sister Val asked the question mm. is that God sent His Son, and we have to get this. God sent His Son, right, to pay the ransom for us. Now, when you when you're paying the ransom for something, what you're doing is that you're paying to set that you're paying to set that person free. All right. So let us look at what is happening now. In order for Jesus to do that, Sister Val, he had to become our substitute. That is what happened. You know, Jesus came to be our substitute. Okay, so when Jesus came, how did he meet us? Sinners, huh? unclean. Sinners, unclean. What does that mean? The adversary was our father. Right, and what does that, if the adversary is your father, what, you mean, what does that mean? So all of the things that he has prepared for us, it wasn't uh, it wasn't us. It, it it wasn't we didn't have it. We were when sinners. he came, right. Go ahead, Sister Beverly. We were sinners. Sinners. Okay. All right. But that that, that okay. We were sinners. Okay. No. We were sinners. Safe. We were separated yeah. from God. Separated. We were broke. Poor. See? Because remember, part of his substitution is that he who was rich gave us his riches and he took our poverty. He took our sin and gave us his righteousness. Hallelujah. Okay. So he took everything that we had that was not good. He took our sicknesses and gave us his health. Thank you, Lord. That's the whole plan of, of, of salvation. It was Jesus's, Jesus becoming who we were and we becoming who Jesus is. And if we understand that, if we understand that, we're going to begin to walk differently. So that is why we became the right, we were made the righteousness of God in Christ. So righteousness is nothing that we pray for. That is what we were made. We were recreated righteous. Faith mm. is nothing that we pray for. Love is nothing that we pray for because when we receive the Holy Spirit, we receive these things and his love is shed abroad in our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The, the biggest problem for us, for us, including me and all of us here the biggest problem that we have the biggest impediment to a walk of faith is a lack of knowledge which we read that earlier on in first peter that is the problem so we need to get this knowledge and that knowledge is not going to be in our brains and another thing about the knowledge that comes from the word is something that we accept unconditionally. So when, when, when the word says by the stripes of Jesus we are healed, if you agree with the word, that is what it is. We have problems agreeing with the word because our sense knowledge is a blocking that agreement. We're trying to figure it out. And you can't figure it out because the moment you try to figure it out, you're bringing your sense 
knowledge and understanding into it. And that is not revelation knowledge. Revelation knowledge is the word of God that you accept unconditionally, not in your head, not with your thinking, mm. but it is what God says. It's like God, we, 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 we speak about this all the time, where Jesus told the man with this withered hand to stretch forth your withered hand. You can't stretch forth no withered hand in the natural. Hello. Mm -hmm. Moses, stretch forth your rod. How, 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 stretch forth your rod? What is going to happen when I stretch forth my, my rod? Well, Moses didn't know what was going to happen, you know. But Moses accepted the word and acted on the word. And the moment he stretched forth that rod, the, the sea opened. So I want us to understand that Jesus, when we talk about Jesus came and paid the ransom for us, is that Jesus came and he became our substitute. He took who we were and made us who he is. And then he took all of that stuff and took it back to, to the adversary who was our father who gave it to us. Took it back to him and says, look, my, my brothers and sisters in Christ, <laughs> where God is now the heavenly father, have returned all this mess. And by the way, you have to give me back the keys to everything that Adam gave you. So now we know that the enemy has no control over the believer. Any control he has is the same control that we give him, Sister Valerie Molyneux, that, the, that Adam and Eve gave to him. Hello? Hello? Amen. Amen. Anybody hearing me out there? So whatever control, go ahead, Sister Val. No, I wasn't saying anything. I said, amen. Sorry. Okay. So whatever control the adversary has for the believer, right, is the control that the believer stop believing God and start believing the adversary and give the adversary to have power and control over us. Okay, so that is what happens there. Now look at verse 10. So we understand the substitution process. Hello, somebody, talk to me. Do we understand the substitution process, Sister yeah. Sandra? Okay, great. He, All took, right. he, he took what we had and give us and give us what he he took our, our mess and give us the righteousness or the, his goodness. Everything that's right. good. Give us, give us health. Give us wealth. Give us eternal life. Give us, give us sonship with God. Give us heirs. Make us heirs of God and joint heirs with Him, Jesus Christ. That is what we have. All right. So now look at verse ten. But God has revealed them to us through His Spirit. Revelation knowledge is spiritual. That is what Jesus said. My words, my words bring to you the information of my revealed knowledge. My words are spirit and they are life. So for the spirit, it continues to say here now, for the spirit searches all things. And, and you notice the, the, the spirit, there's capital S, that's the Holy Spirit. And we don't want to confuse the Holy Spirit with, the, with our newborn again spirit. They're two different spirits. All right? For the spirit searches all things. Yes, the deep things of God. Now, verse 11 says, for what man? I, I actually ask a question and let us examine this. For what man knows the things of a man except the spirit, you notice, you notice, you notice it's it's a common S. That's the spirit of the man. 
which is in him. What man knows the things of a man except the spirit of the man which is in him? There, there is nothing that I have in my mind that anybody could tell me. What I have in my mind, what I have in my spirit that is going through my mind, you would never know. How would you find out? How would you find out what is going through my mind? Unless I speak it. You, you tell me. You speak it or you do it. If that does not happen, you will never know. So, so, so in, in essence, you wouldn't know how dumb or how smart a person is until they open their mouth. Or you wouldn't know how crazy a person is until they start acting up. Okay? And where is that action taking place? What do we act up with? There are words. You can act up with our words. Action. What do we act up is what part of our what our part emotion. of us act up? Emotion. Our bodies. Okay, bodies. Yeah. Yeah. It's yeah. our yeah. but you can have emotions and nobody see it. That's true. But if you go out there, start coughing some people, everybody see it. Or start kicking some people, or if you start feeding some people if you start treating some people nicely however you do it it is always going to be expressed in your body so 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 whatever is going on in that mind and in that spirit transfers to the body and that is how people know and that is what the scripture is saying here for what man knows the things of a man except the spirit of a man which is in him and then he continues to say even so no one knows the things of God. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Hmm. No one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. And remember that when people come and telling you all kinds of stuff. Right? About God and what God said. No, so even so, no one knows the things of God except the Spirit of God. Verse 12, look at verse 12. Now, my goodness, 852. Now we have received not the Spirit of the world. Come on, S. But the Spirit who is from God that we might know, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. Now, this is spiritual education that we're getting from the scriptures. So here's what you have received. We might not, we're going to wrap up and then continue next week. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, right? That's not what we've received. So we can't be behaving like the world. We can't be acting like the world. But the spirit who is from God, that's the Holy Spirit, that we might know the things that have been freely given to us by God. All right? These things, verse 13, these things we also speak. We also speak these things not in words which man's wisdom teaches but which the holy spirit teaches comes comparing spiritual things with spiritual and look at those two s's lowercase s's it's comparing spiritual things the the spirit of the man things right to spiritual things and verse 14 says and i'm wrapping up now in the next five minutes sister Val. But the natural man, who is the natural man? The flesh. Pardon me? The fle us, the flesh. The natural man is the flesh. And who else would you say is the natural man? 
man that's not filled with the Spirit of God. Who have not accepted Jesus Christ. But the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God. Listen to why the natural man, and, and you're right, the flesh and the unbeliever. Because, because, because that is why, you know, Sister Love was using the word carnal, carnality, carnal. A carnal, a carnal Christian is saved. Right? The problem with the carnal Christian is that the carnal Christian is living by sense knowledge. Are we going to cover that? All right? But so we, so, but the natural man does not receive the things of the Spirit of God for their foolishness to him. Nor can he know them because they are spiritually discerned. You can't learn these through your brain that your five senses communicate with you to. But he who is spiritual judges all things, yet he himself is rightly judged by no one. We're spiritual. That's the spirit man. That's us. For who has known the mind of the Lord that he may instruct him? Nobody. But listen to this now. Listen to what we have. We have the mind of Christ. So you see how powerful the substitution work is that he even take our old minds. And now, Sister Valerie, we have the mind of Christ. So we're the ones who are supposed to be designing the next aeroplane that could fly using air as the fuel. That sound exaggerated? No, not really. What the problem is, is that we have not, we have not risen to the knowledge of who we are in Christ. Because that is where we are. That is our address. Our address is in Christ. And if we are in Christ and we are the members of the body of Christ, the actual body of Christ, as I was telling some people at a church I attended yesterday and I, I spoke for a little bit, is that we have to understand that the, this building that you're coming to is not the church. It's an assembly hall where the members of the body of Christ meet <laughs> to share with each other. And what we what we, we we've we've taken we've taken worship we've taken singing and praising and making noise to replace worship. So we have to get into this. We have to develop this knowledge, Sister Valerie, so that we can walk by faith, which is revelation knowledge. So when we hear the word of God, because we have that that faith birth in our newborn again spirit. When we hear the word of God, it activates that faith that we were born with in our new creation, man. But we have to hear the word of God and it gets that faith gets activated and it grows. So that is why once we continue on this path of growth and development, Jesus is saying that we're going to do Sister Vespa, I think you read that tonight. We are going to be able to do greater works than he did. <laughs> because the same Holy Spirit that Jesus had for him to start his ministry is the same Holy Spirit that we have. The same Holy Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead after he, he became our substitute. And what he took from us killed him. Hello. <laughs> What he took from us killed him, Sister Val. That's why he died. And he went and took those things back to the devil and took back from the devil the keys that Adam gave to him so that he has no authority anymore over the believer. 
and we're going to pick it up from there. So I, I'm going to send out the scripture that I want us to look at. And I thought we would have had enough time to ask a whole bunch of questions, even though we did some of that. But for next week, we, I want you to look at Ephesians 4. Let me say it on here so that when you go and listen to the tape. Ephesians, Ephesians 4, verse 21 through 24. I want you to read that scripture. And I also want you to read Matthew 5, verses 44 to 48. Look at those scriptures because we're going to tie them in as we begin to build our spirit man so that we stay connected to the vine so that when we pray we bear fruit with our prayers and take it from there now sister val i'm excited about my new spirit man beginning to beginning to function and take over from my flesh man who is a joke amen amen we know that you have received and we hope that um you jot jotted down the scripture text for next week or again they'll be on the recording i learned from sister angeline by the way on friday on my way home from being away um she called saying she didn't see the lesson for last week so i, I i'm looking scrolling here i didn't see it either so she's right you didn't send it out right yeah, I send it out. I, I, there, oh, I think I had 24, 26 people looked at it. Yeah, he sent it out the same day, same night, or the next really? day. Really? I think I sent it out this yeah. Okay, yes, 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 there it is. Okay, I don't know why she didn't see it. She called me on Friday. All right. I mean, didn't see it either, sister, but... No, I, I was away, so I've been okay. a little helter skelter. Um, Sister Beverly is doing communion with us tonight. We hope you have the elements. Next week is Sister Shelly Ann. If you can't do it, would you let us know? God bless you. Take it away, Sister Bell. Father God, we thank you for all that you, you have Lord. done for us. Mm -hmm. Lord, through your son, Jesus Christ, we thank you for his blood that was shed for us, Lord, for taking, for becoming sin for us although you knew no sin dear lord we yes. thank you we thank you for the cross we thank you god for redeeming us from destruction oh god for setting us free lord from sin and shame god we give you honor tonight we thank you lord we as we remember lord all that you have done for us God, we bless yes, this dear God, and thank you, Lord, for forgiveness of sins. Let's eat the mm. bread. Thank you, Lord, for your body that was broken for us. We thank you for healing. Lord, we thank you, dear God. Thank you, Jesus. Let's drink. Let's drink. In the name of Jesus. Father God, we thank you for your covering upon us, Lord. Thank you, Lord, for all that you have done for us, for what you are doing and what you're continuing to do. God, we yes. commit our lives to you, submit our lives to you. God, we ask you to have your way. Yes. In us, so oh God. Help us, Lord God, that we will will continue to walk in the spirit mm. and not in the flesh. Mm. God, that we will yes. trust in you with all of our hearts, leaning yep. not on our own understanding. Jesus. Mm. All our ways, God, we will acknowledge you. We acknowledge you, that you will direct our paths. Yes. 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 Father God, we thank you. Thank mm. you for your goodness and your mercies. Thank you for thank your you, Father God. Thank you, God. But without you, Lord, we are nothing. nothing. Amen. Tonight, God. And thank you, Lord God, for your covering upon us, upon us, our families, upon our children, God. Mm. Upon our communities. Yes. Father, upon our country. Father God, we thank you, Lord God. We bless your name tonight. Yes, God. For you are good. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amen.
Amen. Praise God. Thank you. God bless you all until we meet again. Yes, Thank yes. you so much for joining Walk us. Walk by your spirit. Walk by the spirit. Walk by the spirit. Amen. 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 Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. Good night. God bless you all. God bless. God bless. God bless.